you've got this asset that you know has outperformed every other asset in the history of the financial markets i mean on a 15 year 10 year five year basis whatever you want to look at i mean you can find some short periods of time where obviously it did not outperform or it had a big correction but but in general if you take a long enough window on it it's been the top performing financial asset kind of ever we're still we're still climbing a big wall of fud and you know it's still the people i mean there are a lot of people i know when i talk about buying Bitcoin and they look at the price and they say, you know, and I'd recommended it to them all along the way. And they go, well, I missed it. I should have bought it at 30. I should have bought it at 15. Well, I can tell you what, when I was buying it at 1500, I thought I should have bought it at a hundred, you know, and, and no matter what price you buy it at, you always can look back five or 10 years and say, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm too late, but uh, back again to the big picture numbers, 300 trillion, 1.4. You're not too late. Bitcoin's price trajectory continues to captivate investors and analysts alike, with predictions of significant growth during the current bull market cycle. For instance, Laurent Benayoun, CEO of Asheron Trading, foresees a potential peak of $180,000 per Bitcoin, driven by factors such as the introduction of Bitcoin ETFs and the upcoming halving event. This optimism is supported by historical performance trends and anticipated improvements in U.S. financial policies. Other analysts echo this sentiment, with some even suggesting price targets exceeding $1 million by 2030. Currently, Bitcoin hovers around the $70,000 mark. Everyone's watching closely, hoping the predictions pan out. In a recent interview, Larry Leopard states that it simply isn't too late to invest in Bitcoin amid its price surges, as he believes that Bitcoin is poised for even higher heights. He notes the growing interest from institutional investors, indicating that even a small percentage of their massive assets under management could substantially impact Bitcoin's value. To him, Bitcoin's network effect could drive its growth for years to come, making it a compelling investment opportunity for those who understand its potential. We will now bring you clips from the interview. As we do, please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more similar content. Make sure to stay through the end of the video as Larry Leopard explains why the world needs more sound money. Thanks and enjoy. You've got this asset that, you know, has outperformed every other asset in the history of the financial markets. I mean, on a 15 year, 10 year, five year basis, whatever you want to look at, I mean, you can find some short periods of time where obviously it did not outperform or it had a big correction. But but in general, if you take a long enough window on it, it's been the top performing financial asset kind of ever. And so, you know, um, one would have to say or ask any, you know, any finance, any any manager of assets, you know, how can you ignore this thing? I mean, <laughs> you know, look at these numbers um, and and what what is going to change that's going to make these numbers what, what's going to make this trend stop? Why aren't you long this thing? I mean, now, obviously, the waiting is, a, is an issue, you know, and if you're 80 years old and you can't suffer a drawdown, you know, you can't go 100% into it. But, you know, there's there's nobody who can't have 1% or 2% in it. If it goes to zero, they won't be affected. And if it does a 10-bagger or 100-bagger, 10 bagger or 100 bagger, it'll make a meaningful impact on their portfolio. So, um you know, it's to me, it's it's a no brainer. And I this is going to happen. The other thing that's going to happen, Sam, I think is micro strategy is going to get big enough. That it's going to get put into the S&P 500. So then you'll just have all these. I mean, as you know, the big trend away from active management to passively managed money has, mm -hmm. has, has been an enormous trend over the past you know, 10, 15 years. That's just going to continue. It's very much a positive feedback loop in the same way that inflation is a negative feedback loop for the dollar. You know, as the dollar loses its value and ability to buy stuff, people are like, why the heck am I holding this thing? You know, why do I want these bonds? Why do I want this cash? It's, it, it, you know, it's a melting ice cube. I just don't want to have it. You know, the other thing on these ETFs, it's interesting is that money's been coming over on the ETFs and that's a good thing. It's been driving the price higher, but you know, it's still, it, these institutions take time. They don't do things quickly. It, it takes time to, to, to filter in and we're still climbing a big wall of FUD. And, you know, it's still the people, I mean, there are a lot of people I know when I talk about buying Bitcoin and they look at the price, I say, you know, and I'd recommended it to them all along the way. And they go, well, I missed it. I should have bought it at 30. I should have bought it at 15. Well, I can tell you what, when I was buying it at 1500, I thought I should have bought it at a hundred, you know, and, and no matter what price you buy it at, you always can look back five or 10 years and say, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm too late. But uh, back again to the big picture numbers, 300 trillion, 1.4. You're not too late. You know, we're still... I mean, this kind of reminds me of like the internet in 95 and 
you know, we had a long way to go in 1995 on the internet in terms of penetration. So yeah. it also reminds me of, I, and I use this example in Madeira, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a new base layer of money. It reminds me very much of Microsoft in the early days. I bought, I think I told the story, I bought Microsoft and then I, I screwed up and I sold it because I wanted to buy a condominium, which is a logical thing for a young guy to do. But, um, you know, it, it, and, and I, I couldn't really foresee and understand just how every, every person in the world was going to have a PC and every PC was going to need operating software and Microsoft had a monopoly on the operating software for those PCs. And so, you know, the network effect of it all just, you know, it just kept multiplying for years and years and years. And, um, you know, that's, that's, I think what's going to happen here. It's, it's, it's sailors, you know, it's going up forever, Laura. I mean, it really is. When you open up a channel that allows people who have brokerage accounts to very easily say, oh yeah, give me some of that. It's a ticker symbol. You know, they're going to, it's going to increase demand for it, you know, full stop. And so that's, you know, I, I think we will, I think we will look back a few years from now and there'll be a lot of people say, oh God, I wish I bought a whole coin at 70 grand. You know, I think, in, I think in 10 or 15 years, it'll be a big deal to, you know, your kids will say, holy shit, you're a whole coiner. I mean, you have an entire coin. Those things are worth a million dollars a piece. You know, how, 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 you know, gosh, dad, you're a millionaire. How did, how did that happen? Um, I mean, I think that that will happen. Um, but you know, that's, that's years out. That's not tomorrow. Um, you know, it's probably 2030 or so, but it, I think it's coming. A recent report from CryptoQuant states that Bitcoin is nearing a supply shortage. This crunch is driven by high demand, especially with the introduction of the Bitcoin ETFs in the US. With dwindling supply and soaring demand, Bitcoin's market dynamics could change significantly by early 2025. According to CryptoQuant's analysis, Bitcoin's sell-side liquidity is at an all-time low. The current supply may only meet demand for about 12 months, gradually revealing the pressing issue of scarcity. Even when focusing on US exchanges, the available supply is halved, suggesting a tightening market. CEO Ki Young Ju discussed this liquidity crisis, noting unusual activity among Bitcoins mined in 2010. Despite brief outflows, recent data shows significant inflows, indicating continued investor interest amidst tightening supply. This could mark a transformative period for Bitcoin's market dynamics. Let us now return to the interview with Larry Leppard, as he reveals his speculations regarding the stance of larger entities on Bitcoin. You know, the guys, I mean, Lowry said uh, in a private conversation with my partner that, you know, the CIA and the Pentagon get it. I mean, they understand what an important strategic asset this is. And, and if they get it, my guess is that at, at, a, at a smart high level, somebody in China gets it and somebody in Russia gets it and some of the Gulf states get it. So I, I actually suspect there are some central banks or some national actors who are buying Bitcoin. I really yeah. I believe that to be true, but not reporting it yet. I mean, look, if you were trying to buy it and accumulate it, would you report it? You know, I wouldn't. You, you, you know, you keep your mouth shut. It's the Biden administration, the Treasury and the, and the Fed that all hate it and want to, you know, try and shove it aside. But the smart guys, the, the military guys get it. The Pentagon and, and the CIA, you know, the, the strategic guys, they get it. They understand what it is. They realize how important it is. And their view is, no, 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 no. We got to be we got to be adding to this, not selling it. So, you know, it's D.C. Who the hell knows who's going to prevail? But, yeah. but you know, there are competing views on it. It's rather sad. And I, you know, like I've been accused, I've been accused of being a doomer and I really I, I really dislike that label because all I'm trying to do is analyze historical comparables and see what's happened. And, you know, based on that, I mean, there, there is a better world on the other side of this. And, you know, mm -hmm. sound money people, what we can do is educate people to that fact and, and help people to understand that the money really is the underlying issue. I mean, I, I watch, you know, blue red debates and I just I'm like, you guys are all missing the point. <laughs> you know, it's mm -hmm. it's not about, you know, all the things you guys think it's about. It's really the reason society is suffering the way it's suffering is because we built it on a monetary premise that's fundamentally flawed. I mean, going off the gold standard in 1971 was a really, really bad thing. Um, but here we are. And all we can do, you know, given the cards were dealt, I mean, every generation set of generations has its challenges. I mean, you know, the generation born in the 30s, they had to go fight World War II and, and you know, risk their lives and defeat fascism. And, you know, your generation, you know, to, to the degree I'm around, still my generation, we, you know, we got we to gotta fight this monetary, this monetary monster that's going to create some, some real disruption, sadly. 
but it's, it's just baked in the cake. Meanwhile, the CEO of Galaxy Digital, Mike Novogratz, has raised concerns about the increasing debt of the United States and proposed some solutions to avoid a financial crisis. He suggests cutting government spending, raising taxes for the wealthy, and closing tax loopholes to prevent a potential debt disaster. Novogratz warns that if these steps aren't taken, the country could face serious financial problems, as the national debt has already reached a staggering $34 trillion and keeps growing. With this, he affirms that assets like Bitcoin are becoming more and more attractive to people during this time of economic uncertainty, as they are now seen as stabler investments. Novogratz has been a strong supporter of Bitcoin and believes its value will continue to rise, predicting it could reach $100,000 this year. He points out that more people are investing in Bitcoin, especially through exchange-traded funds, which are becoming popular worldwide. The warnings about the US debt crisis have made some investors turn to Bitcoin as a way to protect their money. Prominent figures like Senator Cynthia Lummis and BlackRock CEO Larry Fink have spoken positively about Bitcoin, seeing it as a hedge during uncertain times. With experts like Novogratz and others endorsing Bitcoin, it's becoming increasingly popular as a way to safeguard wealth against economic instability caused by rising national debt. Do you agree with Larry Leopard's insights? And what are your thoughts on the performance of Bitcoin following the halving? Feel free to drop your thoughts and analyses in the comments below. If you found today's video enlightening and want to stay ahead with more insights and updates on crypto and global finance, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and turn on post notifications. Your support greatly encourages us to continue providing in-depth content and discussions. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll uncover more about the fascinating developments in the cryptocurrency space. Until then, keep questioning, keep exploring, and most importantly, keep investing wisely. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.